Huh. Brandon, you can see it. The, there's two Excel files. Well, I guess, you know, if we mute our uh, microphone, I think it, it defaults to your screen, so. Okay. Uh, I don't know what else to do on my end. I, I'm sharing, and it shows I'm sharing on my end. Samira, can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. I can't really read it, but I can see, I mean, as you point, I mean. All right, well, I'm going to, I can zoom in a oh, little bit. Oh, there it is. Yes, that's better. Ah, okay. <laughs> yes, I was able to see it when I clicked on it. I clicked on you on the bottom right-hand corner. All right. I'm going to give you a clue here, and then I, I think y'all can work it from there. Um, can y'all see this now? Brandon, can you see it? Yes. Okay. This is a, a just a piece of, this, of the uh, worksheet, and I think it'll tell you what you need to do. The, the problem gave you the demand and I uh, someone asked the question I forget who it was so I clarified that that that's total demand that's what I meant it to be and the company Charlie company gets a share of that and so if you take their share of the total demand that's how many units that they sold and then based on their price they get a revenue and then from the revenue they subtract their costs and they've got four types of costs there. And once you subtract all four of those costs, you get a profit or a loss. And that's really all the spreadsheet is. And then you just replicate that over five years using those uh, growth factors that I gave you. And um, that's really how it goes together. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. What I'm saying, for example, that, you know, the first year, their share was 20%. And then I think there's a, I, 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 can, I don't know where I can find the actual wording of the problem, but uh, there's a, a, a growth rate that we predict. That's where we get the, the simulation. You know, we estimate that the growth is going to be between two numbers over the, each of those subsequent four years. And so you just say, well, what are my, what's my share going to be in year two? Well, that's share in year one plus the growth, right? Now how you... Are you using, okay, so you got total demand, you got 5, 15, and 20%, um, you know, a range. Um, so are you using a, like a RAND, like function for Excel, or are you doing everything in... Um, the CV. Well, what, what you do, you, you, you go ahead and build your model in Excel, just the way you normally would in Excel. So, um, well, shucks. I'll give you this much. You can see there. I'm giving you this problem, so you get a little something for attending. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the the um, demand had a growth factor, and uh, you put that percent growth in this cell, and then you go to crystal ball, and you define that assumption with whatever that distribution is. And then that uh, demand up here, if you can see that, it's just equal to the original year's demand. And I use, there's a number of ways you can calculate that. I, I like to use one plus the percent. So that would be the, the second year is 115% of the first year. And you just propagate that on through year three, four, and five. And then you do the same thing for the share. The share has a growth that we simulate. It's got a distribution. I, I don't remember what the if the distribution is triangular or uniform or normal. Okay. But, but whatever that distribution is, you you know, set this up as, you know, to be, to be modeled, to be simulated. And then again, that percent share is just the first year plus, in the way I do it, one plus the percent. And you, you just go across that way. And uh, if it's a decrease, then it's one minus the percent. That, that's the, about as simple as I can make it. And what I like to do, I like to break everything out separately before I start summing up, um, that that's the best way of doing it. 
I, I've done this so many times that it, you know, at the bottom I will go ahead and just use one formula to add everything up. But um, you can break that into pieces. You could just, you know, total up your revenue, total up your cost, and then subtract the cost from the revenue, you know, one number to get the profit. Uh, might be a safer way to build it if you don't, you know, if you haven't built many of these models. But anyway, you just define these things as a variable, and then you decide, you define the bottom number here, the profit, as a forecast. That's what you want to see, you know, you're studying. And you do that for your whole model. And then once you get it built together, you just click on run. And that's all, all there is to it. Yeah, that makes sense. So I guess what I was, you know, I can't seem to get uh, my brain out of the long-handed Excel formulas. So I was trying to figure out, you know, using the CB to try and change those variables. To me, that I, I was imagining that I had to figure that out first and then put it into CB. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I I don't know. I, these these additional programs, they're all. I mean, now I, I, I figured out problem one with uh, Crystal Ball, at least I think. I don't, mm -hmm. I have no idea. But I, I'm pretty sure I did it right. But, um, yeah, coming up coming up with that, with it, it's a it's a pretty unique program. Um, well, it just it just can do this so quickly. I've built this thing <laughs> manually use, using the Excel functions for random, and then I created a triangular distribution and made a macro, uh, which is not that hard to do. So you know, so I could build these kinds of things without using Crystal Ball, except it takes a lot longer <laughs> to do it manually, and you know, my simple version doesn't have the fancy reports that Crystal Ball gives you. Um, the, uh, you know, I, I can produce a, a, a curve and I can produce all the data manually, but Crystal Ball makes it so much easier to do all this if you're going to do this thing over and over again. And I guess, you know, our intent with this course is to introduce you to let you know these kind of tools are out there. So, you know, if your company... Most individuals can't afford to spend about a thousand bucks for crystal ball, but a lot of companies can if they do this a lot. Um, but you know, just so when you get out in the business world, you know, I don't have to build everything from scratch in Excel. Decision tree is out there, pH stat is out there, crystal ball is out there. You know, all these these add-ins are out there. Some are free, some a few hundred bucks. But if you do this a lot, or you have a lot of people doing it, that you know it makes sense for the company to buy that add-in, and uh, that's really the sense. But you can do this. I've done this this problem step by step, just using Excel functions. It's, it's, you can do it. It's just a lot of work. Right. I think that was my problem trying to disconnect and figure out where where Excel stops. And crystal ball takes over. You know, for me, that's just it's been very confusing and and taxing on the brain um, in the little time that I actually do have to do any kind of homework. <laughs> well, so, yeah, I, I can understand that, and it. Um, I, I I hear you. I know what it's like to work a full time job and do this. If y'all, you know, if you look at just let me look at this other example that's in that comes with crystal ball. This is a simple, simple, simple. You know, model there again. It's just the rental times the rent times the monthly expenses, and they call them assumptions. I call them variables. And you can see there, the first one is a uh, a uniform distribution with a min and a max, and this one is a normal distribution with a mean and standard deviation. And of course, that's the forecast. And all you need to do is just click start. Let me run it again. And of course, it. This one populates 16 zillion graphs out there. Um, whoops. That's running mine. I'm sorry. It just ran mine. You didn't see all these. <laughs> I'll be doggone. I, for, I, I forgot it. It runs, you know, when when you've got, I've got two, two instances of um, Excel crystal ball out there, and crystal ball doesn't know that. So when you click run, it runs every active window. That's why we got all those other charts popping up there. But this is the, I think this is the one for this little simple model. 
and it gives you a histogram. It ran 1,000 trials. You can set the number of trials right there. And um, this is the, the histogram of, you know, which is a normal distribution since the, the major expense item was normally distributed, then it would make sense that the output is going to pretty well parallel that, that uh, variable. And it shows it goes from losing $2,000 to earning about $7,500. And you can look at statistics, which you know shows you how many trials, and it shows the mean out of all those trials, medium and mode, you don't need all those things, but it gives you a lot of information there. And with the standard error down here, if you remember standard errors, with the standard error, you can calculate a confidence interval. If you, you know, your boss wants to know what what is the confidence interval around this mean, you just take the standard error and multiply it times the critical value of T or Z. This would be Z, and uh, for for alpha over two, and that would give you the confidence interval around that. Um, let me go back here to this chart, and to answer some of these questions, the the way I like to remember it. If I'm asking a left tail question, I put whatever value I'm interested in in the left tail. And if you remember the, the chart I, I posted earlier in the course, uh, less than or equal or less than points to the left, so that would be uh, a zero. If we were interested, what's the probability I would make zero money? Just put zero in there and click enter. And it shows there's a 91% chance I'm going to break even on this model. And you can also just drag these pointers. So I could drag it to zero and get a, about the same thing. Um, if I want to know what's the likelihood that I'll make more than 4,000, you got to then just click enter. It shows that um, I, I did it backwards again. But anyway, it, it shows you that there's a 78% chance you'll make less than 4,000, so that would be a 22% chance you'll make more than 4,000. And, and it gives you a graphic there. And you can just use these pointers. Drag it there, and the it, there's about a 51% chance it'll be between $1,100 and $4,000. So you can answer a lot of those questions just by either keying in to these areas or dragging the pointers to... Um, Notice I wanted, and you can drag a lot of different ways there, but let me try and 80%. There's roughly 80%. So there'd be an 80% chance it'd be between $300 and $5,000. I'm dragging it back and forth. If you're asked what's the chance it'll be between $500 and $6,000, key it in that way and you'll get the exact answer. There's a 81% chance it'll be between that range. Remember those old normal distribution problems, you know, when we're doing hypothesis tests? That's really all this is doing for you. It, it, uh, but it gives you a quick way to answer these questions. The other thing you can, let's see if I can find it on here. Is it up there? Uh, I clicked out of crystal ball limit. Where are the views? I don't use crystal ball. There it is. Is that going to work? Well, I'm clicking the wrong buttons here. I don't do this enough. Um, there's a way you can you can create a sensitivity chart, and for some reason it's not coming up. This is a lot like SPSS. I'm trying to remember. There it is. It's on my other screen. I don't know what SPSS is. SPSS is a, uh, a statistical um, software that is used by a lot of people. I used it uh, in my doctoral program. IBM bought them about three years ago, and they've really started adding on a lot of tools. When I used SPS, it didn't have these Monte Carlo simulations built in, but now you can you can do all this stuff in in SPSS, and it's actually cheaper by a long shot than buying crystal ball. Um, 
you can buy an annual subscription to SPS for about 80 bucks versus, I think this is not. I have a question. Pardon? I'm sorry. I have a question. My kids were screaming and I was yelling at them. Okay. Are we supposed to do this for the homework, this part right here? No, well, what you, what you would do is, you know, once you build your model, you run it uh, and you will get for both, both, you know, the problem one and problem two, you run it and you will get a histogram like this one. You run it again. And of course, see, it's running, it's running all these histograms for the second model. Remember in the second model, you've got, you know, you'll have each of the five years and here you can see the histogram for year two, year three, year four, and year five. And there's the histogram for the cumulative. And I think there's 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 a question about what happens in year two. And then there's a question about, you know, how much money do we make in the uh, cumulative? And so you would use that particular histogram to, you know, answer the questions. Um, so you get a little, a little speak, sneak. So through. that, uh, the, those... Um... Assumptions or variables are created per year. Yeah. That, okay. So that's how you come up with the multiple histograms or instead of going like straight across, you created an individual assumptions for each of those with the same um, uh, characteristics or, you know, plus or minus values. Correct. Exactly.